Hello, everybody. I'm Peter, and I do have something pretty cool to show you here today. But before we get into that, in this video, sponsored by Squarespace, I have something cool to show to you. I was on a walk the other day, and I found this little guy, which um, I think came from a magnolia tree. Look at that. Oh, there's like a little piece of something on there. Get off. It's just like such a weird fur-like sensation, right? It so well imitates fur, but it's just it's just a leaf or a plant or something that is curled in on itself. I think it's from a magnolia tree. Someone else probably knows. I was holding it not gently enough, and uh, some of it already cracked off like this, but it's just so interesting looking to me. It almost looks fake. Like if you look at the edge of it here, it looks like it was almost manufactured or something. Uh, but yeah, look at that. It's very brittle and dry. I wonder what it looks like when it's fresh. Anyways, um, obviously there's tons of them out there. I think there's probably a whole tree full of these things, whatever this is. So I'm just gonna throw it away now, but I just wanted to show it to you guys first. Also, a very cool thing I found on the ground uh, is, hey, have you ever had problems walking all six of your turtles? Do you just have a lot of turtles and they're getting out of control? Well, now your burgeoning turtle walking business problems have all been solved with this, the six-way turtle collar. Now easily walk all six of your turtles uh, all at once. And hey, you don't have six turtles yet? No problem. Simply fold it back and you can walk four turtles or fold it back again for the, the double collar. No problem. Look at that. And uh, if, even if you accidentally drop it on the ground, it'll never disintegrate or disappear. Uh, it's around forever. That's right. Make a nice permanent choice purchase today. All right. Now on uh, moving on today's pens. I know I'm just making the videos longer and longer by putting all this silly stuff in front of the video, but today's pens, I'm gonna go ahead and put one here like this. You can see the logo. A V within a V. Today's pen is uh, by a country called, a company called Venustas, which I at first had to look up uh, well, I had to send them a message on Instagram because here you can see on this other thing, it says V-E-N-V-S-T-A-S. -E and, you know, this is pronounced like a U, but it's written like a V. In fact, it's written like two Vs, which to me emphasized the V soundingness of it to me. But no, I, inst I messaged them on Instagram and I was like, hey, how do you pronounce this? And they um, directed me towards a video by uh, Fig Boot on Pins, David Parker, who I've done a video with before, and they said, here, he, here's a review he did on the pens, and uh, he pronounced it right. So I looked up his video, and he said Venustas, I think. As you can see here, here's their website, venustas.com. Um, I didn't watch, as soon as David Parker in his video said the word Venustas, I turned it off because I didn't really want to know what he thought of the pen. Not because I don't care what he thinks, but because I wanted to form my own opinion, you know, without other opinions poking it, crowding it out, right? Just want to look at it, think what I think. Of course, there's all, we don't, we, none of us live in a vacuum. There's always other opinions affecting ours, but uh, let's crack this open. I think this, so uh, from what I gathered, briefly talking to them on Instagram, is that this is a, a mostly two-man company out of Italy, as you can see, and they make carbon fiber pens. Uh, I don't think they're that cheap, but then again, like the titanium pen we looked at before, the base material, in this case, carbon fiber, fi fiber is pretty expensive stuff. Also, I do like the packaging so far. Um, it's elegant without being like excessive in its uh, properties. Like it, it still looks really nice, but it's still just like cardboard and, and cardstock in this case. Oh, there we go. Here, I'm kind of bending this back. It says, write your history, design your future, venustas.com. And here 
is the pen, which is slightly cool to the touch. I will say that, oh, as I twisted this, because this, uh, I don't know, it's not a joint, but this cut right here is at a slant. If you twist it, I don't think there's a thread, but if you twist it, it kind of separates it a little. I'm going to move this out of the way. Yeah, since this, uh, oh, look, comes with a piston inside. Should I try pulling that out? I like it when pens come with pistons. That's always a good little score in my book. Of course, you're allowed to have different preferences, but I do like how you can push it down, but then to get it started, you just twist it, and it starts separating because of the way this, um, I don't know, what is the word for this? I don't know. Also, I did something I don't normally do with these pens in in that uh, in the process of me trying to figure out how it's pronounced. I ended up on their YouTube channel, which is pretty small, uh, but they have a video, which when I think I looked at it, it only had like 68 views or something, but they have a video where they show how they make these pens. I don't know if they show the part where they form the actual carbon fiber. Uh, that was the part I was mostly interested in, but they show the part about... Uh, like machining a lot of the different parts of this and they show the the craftsmen like hand assembling all the different parts i think the whole thing is held together with just these two little four millimeter maybe two millimeter screws they tighten in with a couple little allen wrenches they showed a lot of the laser engraving they do like i think this little v is laser, laser engraved i got an m nib here m for mild so on the website, it said that this carbon fiber is linear carbon fiber, but I think most carbon fiber is linear. I briefly perused the Wikipedia page and learned that carbon fiber is made up of carbon filaments. Um, most of these filaments are like four to five micrometers thick, and then they're kind of to bunched together into the something you can weave into the fiber, like th a few thousand of the filaments into a yarn or a toe, I think it's called. And then they kind of go there. But, you know, the classic look of carbon fiber is kind of a, it's kind of a woven look, like a basket weave, but they obviously didn't go for that, that here. I think maybe what they're trying to say is that it's just a linear thing. It just goes in one direction like this. And as you can see, even the camera is having a hard time picking up this pen just because it's such a, such a deep matte black and it does feel good in my hand and i do like the way the pen pen nib comes off of there and the way it goes back on that is pretty satisfying the the minimalism of it you know i'm into minimalism right now as far as my pens go let's see if it posts my hand's a little shaky drink Drink a lot of coffee. Oh, it slides right in there. It does the exact same thing I wanted on the back. Do you see that? Oh, let's see that again. Twist. Oh, yeah, okay. That was a little bit tight there, but still, that's really nice. Oh, it feels good in the hand. I really like that, actually. Now, as far as I can tell, this pen, uh, I don't know what model it is. I'll put it in the description, of course, a link to it. Oh, here on the end, more of the laser engraving they did, which you can see in the video I watched. Uh, but I think this pen is like $250. But so far, I really like it. Carbon fiber. Definitely not an, anything I've seen in the pen pen game before. I'm sure it is a thing. You can see there is a tiny gap here where I see something poking through. What is this? Oh no, it's just like a... Does anyone else see that little speck of something shiny right there? What is that? Might have just been a speck. Anyways, we should put some ink in this. Obviously for the carbon fiber pen, I'm going to use carbon ink by platinum seems appropriate and then once i get this ink in here and then do a little test run i'm going to uh, show you the other thing they also sent me which i did glance at already 
and I am excited about. Um, I'm going to do the method where I, I don't know. See, I, a lot of times I do the method where I dip the whole thing in and twist it. That way it sucks up ink through the nib. But then sometimes it's like there's so many, there's so many like folds and inlets and stuff around the nib that I feel like it'll get really messy. And it'll be hard to get all the ink out if I do that. But maybe I should just, uh, I'm going to go for it for experimentation's sake. I'm going to try to refill it by dunking the whole thing. Plus this ink bottle's not too full, so it shouldn't be too bad. Okay. I think most of the ink can kind of wick out of here, like out from underneath this little gap here. I'm just a little bit worried that some will come out later when I'm least expecting it, you know what I mean? But it looks all right, we can give it a shot. And now you can see it's full here. My fingers are nice and messy. And I can put this back on there. Fits on nice and snug. The cap is still on the back. It just looks like a solid black rod, like a like a sensor bar almost. I'm holding in my hand, featureless. It kind of, I'm kind of entranced. It looks like a stick of charcoal. You know what I'm saying? Like a stick of vine charcoal. Okay, let's try it out right here. Car. Carbon. Fiber. Seems to work. And the M nib is not too much. Then. This. That's how their V is. Then. The Noustus. I think that's how you spell it. Well, let's have it right in front of me. It seems to be really working. It doesn't work quite as well for these two strokes, but I was moving it absurdly fast and it doesn't always work. Okay, I shook it a little bit just now and you could see a few drops came out, but I think those might've been drops that were lingering up here and I was just, you know, shaking it dry. I don't think those were coming out of the actual nib. Cool. I like it so far. And now we just have to check out the uh, accompanying pen. I mean, other thing that came with it. I'm gonna turn over my piece of paper here. And that is this one coming in a little triangular box. Once again, still elegant, but minimal and just made of like cardstock or black um, cardboard. Cool little holographic sticker here that was also on the other box on the end. There we go, my hand is still shaking. Hopefully that goes away before I try drawing. There's a piece of paper that came with this one. Two millimeter mechanical pencil, it says. It says there are careful instructions here that I should read. Wait, I'm looking in the other box to see if there was also a piece of paper here. It's very interesting. Oh wait, oh wait, wait, this one did come with, I was like, why did the little, this come with a piece of paper, but the other one didn't. This one also did come with a piece of paper, which I'm showing you now. This one is, this the piece of paper that came with the pen. Cap, barrel, section. Wow, this is the second time I've heard this part referred to as a section. Well, uh, wasn't I reading some other pen before? I mean, looking at some other pen before where they, the instructions referred to something as the section, and I was confused because I thought that was like a mistranslation of something, but maybe this is actually called the section. Because the way I kind of assumed it was that these could all be described as sections. Like this is the front section, this is the back section, this is the lid section, but maybe this is just called the, the section. Could be. Anyways, here we have it. Uh, two millimeter mechanical pencils. This is, let me zoom in here on the front. You can see it says, uh, oh, my ears are starting to ring. It's doing that thing in my head where everything else got kind of quiet. And then I hear this, wait, what's the pitch? That, 
that ever happened to anyone else? Anyways, and here it says uh, Venustus and made in Italy, A0120. And this one's got some little slits on the side. Once again, the camera's kind of having a hard time picking up this, uh, this pencil. The features here, because it's so dark and featureless. But then, what you do is you press right here. It really does kind of have almost the... F it looks like it would have the texture of vine charcoal to me. I don't know if you can tell in the video, but then it's... Uh, thankfully, I feel like if it really felt like vine charcoal, it would be very kind of... I know people say the word cringy a lot these days, but like, I feel like the actual feeling of it would make me cringe if it felt like that. Also, this feels very dainty and fragile in my hand, but I'm hoping that that isn't one of the reasons that people use carbon fiber because it's strong. I'm hoping that it isn't actually as weak as it feels like it should be at this, um, you know, it's so, so thin and light. It barely weighs anything. Anyway, so what you do is you uh, press here, right? which sends out these little grabber things. And then this piece of lead <laughs> is inside. It's a very long piece of lead. But then, so yeah, you can hold it out like that. And then uh, it draws like this. And then just for demonstration purposes, I'm going to break the lead, okay? So now the lead has been broken, and now I'll show you what you need to do if you want to sharpen it again, is use one of these little things, a lead pointer. There's two little holes here, depending on the type of lead pointer you have. This one makes it slightly duller. This one makes it sharper. You can see that one has a slightly duller point. And you put it in here, and then release as much of it will fit into the hole as possible, like so. And then you put it in here, turn, this should sharpen it to a very sharp point if everything goes according to plan. You know it's you know it's finished when it stops making the grindy noise, which it just about has now. Hopefully it's not grinding the actual pencil. Oh yeah, there we go. Look sharp again. This is a very hard lead though, I can tell because it's not very drawing very dark lines. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to, I mean, that's fine, okay? That's nothing against the pen itself. But I have these little refills. Uh, I have the HB, the 2B. I think I'm just gonna go for kind of more of a middle ground and put one of these, put one of these HB LEDs in there. And then I'm gonna draw a picture and we're gonna use both. I'm not 100% sure in which way we're gonna use both the pen and this pencil. But my first thought is that I can do a little bit of pre-sketching with the pencil maybe, and then draw with the pen, and then come back afterwards and try to do some shading and, and other little touch-ups with the pencil. So there you have it. I haven't used them for drawing yet, but to be honest, I'll admit I'm kind of thrilled with these. That's coming from someone who didn't have to buy them, okay? Granted, I get, did get them for free, and they are pretty expensive. I didn't look up how much the pencil is. Uh, so of course you need to count, factor in uh, the price and your budget and everything. But if that's not a factor and, and that all works out, then I really like them. See, look, now I have three cool uh, lead holders. This is not, <sighs> I'm getting a little bit afraid now because now this is like another thing I'm collecting, right? These are three excellent lead holders that I've got now and I'm pretty excited. But yeah, that it's pretty. It's pretty. I was gonna say it's pretty something, but it's just it's just pretty. They both are. I like it. This seems this pencil almost seems like a science fiction tool of some sort. And then this have you ever um read Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy? That guy who had, what's his name? Hot Black Desiato or something. He had a spaceship that was so black you couldn't see it or something like that. Like, you know how dark colors like black, they don't reflect light. 
reflect light. They absorb it. This guy had a spaceship that was so black, all light just fell into it or something like that. And it was, you couldn't even, like your eyes couldn't focus on it. It was so dark. Same way that my camera is having trouble focusing on it. Uh, unless I shine the light on it just the right way. That, I mean, it's just so cool. I like it. I don't remember what I was saying, but we should we should draw now after a word from our sponsors. Ah, uh, Squarespace. I remember when I first made my website, peterdraws.com. I only chose Peter Draws for my channel name and my pen name because peterdraws.com was available. And, and you can use Squarespace to host domains, but you can also use it to create your website, which is like an online version of yourself. It's kind of like window shopping, these templates and flipping through them all. Maybe that's a little bit weird to say, but in this version of window shopping, you and the things you've made and are proud of and want to share with the world is what is behind the windows. And then other people will be able to flip through them, both for window shopping purposes and real shopping purposes. So go check them out. Maybe some template will strike a chord with you and you can get started. So try out the free trial at squarespace.com and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Peter Draws. Right now, let's try using these deep black, almost invisible writing instruments to uh, draw something. Shall, shall, shall we? So I did initially plan to do a little bit of pre-sketching with the carbon fiber pencil. Wait, let me tell you the, the two models of pens that were, I, I finally looked it up on the website, the two models here. The, the pen is called the Magna, right? They do have another, another pen that is not a cartridge pen. It's called something else. This is the Titanium Nib Magna, all right? That's the fountain pen. And then the lead holder, their mechanical pencil, as they call it, is called the Designer 8. Right now you know what we're dealing with here. Uh, oh, and I should discuss price for you, which I have also looked up, done a slight bit of research on since uh, filming the first part of this video. It turns out that the Magna, the fountain pen, is 249 euros. The pencil is 99 euros. So let me do a little bit of conversion for you, for those of you who may be in the U United States. Um, so if I was to purchase this stuff here, it would cost me $268.51 for the pen, $106.76 for the pencil, and then on the website it says it's $21.57 to uh, ship things to North America. So the grand total for me to buy both of these things and ship them here would have been, if my calculations are correct, $396.84. Uh, so that is dangerously close to the 400 mark, which is a magical number, um, which it's as many as f four 100s. It's a lot, is what I'm trying to say. I don't think I would have ever used this pen if I just looked at a picture of it on the internet and then saw the price. Uh, the pic In the picture, it just looks like a regular pen, more or less, right? The, the website is pretty nice, but I don't know, it's just not enough. I'm, everyone is, is at a different point, a different place in their pen journey, journey, right? And I'm just not there where I can look at a picture of a pen and buy it for, for $268.51. But I'm glad I have it now. I'm really enjoying it, you know? So I don't know. I'm just putting that out there for people who are at that point. It's pretty nice. Anyways, what I was going to say is that I am, uh, I was planning on doing some like pre-sketching. Like I was going to do this in three stages a little bit of sketching and then draw on top of it and then draw with pencil some more afterwards for the third stage. But no, the pre-sketching did not work out. I spent like a whole day of doing, I did like three little pre-sketching drawings and none of them really turned out how I wanted. For some reason, that's just not a part of 
that's just not a drawing system that I've worked out of my mind yet. I haven't figured how to figure out how to do that very well in a way that I enjoy or I don't know, drawing's weird. And so it didn't work out. So what I ended up doing was just draw the border with pencil. And then I had just had to start drawing with, with pen, like I normally do. And I did that for several hours, the pen drawing. And then I came in at the very end and then did some shading with the pencil. I, accident, I actually upgraded, not upgraded, but swapped out the HB lead in the pencil to the 2B. Might as well. I thought since I'm doing shading, I might as well make it the slightly softer, darker lead. Right. And also I want to mention, uh, as I was reading this carbon fiber Wikipedia article, um, for your edification here, I did pick up a few interesting SAT words, um, some really nice words that I'm not sure what all of them all of them mean. Some of them I can kind of infer what they mean just by looking at the uh, you know sometimes you can just look at the parts of words and you know what they mean just because you've seen those parts of words in other words, the roots of the words I guess. Anyways, here's four words for you that I thought were very interesting. Um, the first one is maybe the, the first two are maybe the most simple and easy, easiest to uh, assume what they mean. Um, the first one is amperometry. Um, that's obviously some sort of measurement of amps. And uh, the next one is poltrusion. This that word is straight out of the Wikipedia article. Okay, poltrusion. I'm guessing that's just like extrusion, except you pull it. Involves pulling instead of ex ex poltrusion. I don't know. It sounds interesting. I like it. Now this third one here is maybe my favorite one. This is a real word that that, that involves a part of the carbon fiber, like a development process. The word is prepregging. Has anyone ever used that word in a sentence before? Does anyone here use that on a daily basis? Prepregging. It's a scientific word, okay? It's like a, it involves factories and stuff, so it's pre-pregging. All right, and the last one um, is a scientific word that they usually use an acronym for, P-A-N. It involves, it's like one of the precursors to carbon fiber. This is what they use to make carbon fiber. Polyacrylonitrile. I like words like that. Where it's like, it kind of reminds me of Germans. German? Not Germans, but the the language German, how they uh, make new words by stringing a bunch of other words together. That's pretty cool. They kind of do that with the scientific lingo too in English. Polyacrylonitrile. It's like three three different words strung together. Anyways, pretty sweet. Um, look, I like the pens. The the pen, the pencil. I think I'm going to keep using them. It is regrettable uh, how expensive these are, and. Uh, like the the people from those TI those titanium pens I used recently, like uh, they they sent me a message also, kind of briefly explaining why their pens were so expensive, so expensive, and they mentioned things like, um, like all the machines it takes to make the pens and keeping, uh, like the the space up and running and just all the the process, right? And it's probably a similar similar thing here, like having a machine shop to make pens. Uh, I, I can't imagine how expensive that is, but anyways, um, I'm not trying to, I mean, I am trying to justify it a little bit. Um, it is nice to have a kind of explanation to why something costs what it does, but, uh, if it's still too expensive for you, of course, it's still just going to be too expensive for you. There, there's always going to be a nicer pen and there's always going to be a pen at your budget that you can use to do what you need to do and want to do. Uh, but whenever you're ready to upgrade, there's always going to be that pen. There's always, you know, there's there's pens out there that cost two hundred and fifty thousand dollars or a million dollars. I'm sure. I'm sure there's a. I'll I'll sell you a pen for a billion dollars if you want. So, uh, just let me know. I'm pretty happy with how this drawing turned out. There was a fair amount of smudging that I dealt with, which I think was my fault for putting my hand on wet parts of the drawing that hadn't dried yet. So I'll blame myself for that because in my experience, this um, carbon platinum ink does do pretty well in this Bristol paper I was using. Um, so I don't know. Yeah. All right. Goodbye, everyone. Thanks for watching. You're all doing great. Hang in there. Uh, all right. What's next?
Got to think about what's next. Ah, oh, lunch. Lunch is next. Pot pie, here I come. <laughs>